welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. There is always a means to create change, and it always begins with imagination. How will you start your business this year? Walt Disney is quoted to have said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Just Minding My Business Media, LLC is about the doing. Become known for your products or services on JMB Radio Podcasts. Heard in over 200 countries, or if you're ready to take the leap, move to Mindset Movers TV as a host or series producer, broadcasting to the combined audience of Roku and Fire TV. Let's move in the right direction together. Contact us at jmnbradio at gmail.com. Everything you can imagine is real. Pablo Picasso. Today, we welcome Amy Anderson from Wild Coffee Marketing. She's a widely respected and creative industry leader who sees the unique opportunity to leverage creativity to transform both brands and entire organizations across multiple sectors. Amy has more than 25 years of experiences at brands such as Calvin Klein and the New York Times Digital and drives strategy, creative and implementation across Wild Coffee's diverse client roster that includes e-commerce, manufacturing, healthcare, financial services, and technology clients. Her work is focused on transforming businesses through a diverse set of disciplines and tailor-made teams that span strategy, digital marketing, public relations, and marketing consulting. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I like to start off with how do you get on this road? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, do you want the childhood version or how I studied English in college and had no idea what I wanted to do and got an interview at Seventeen Magazine and found that I loved media and marketing? And that's exactly how it happened. Uh, My parents knew someone who knew someone who knew someone. I got an interview and I got this job and sort of started my career in media and marketing then. Wow. Isn't it funny how we plan to do some one thing and then it just goes to a whole nother place. Well, I think when you're open, right? And you see little doors open and then sometimes people open doors for you. And you just know you need to walk through. Yes. Yes. You don't worry about what you don't know, what you don't have. You just walk through the door. Exactly. Absolutely. And you have the perfect personality for what you do. (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting. So we've been talking a lot about being an entrepreneur lately. And I mentor a group of high school students here in Naples, Florida, in the business and entrepreneurship class. And I've been talking about it on podcasts. And recently I listened to someone, you know, they were all talking about being born entrepreneurs. I was not. I was a corporate person. I liked the rules. I liked having the safety of a job. And then this just happened by accident. And then once, you know, I've been in it for four or five years, now now I realize what I'm good at, what my strengths are. Um, but I was not a born entrepreneur. I was made by accident. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes that's the best way when you don't know what's happening. (laughs) Right, Ruth? You're just like, oh gosh, here I am, you know? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you make the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ruth. When did you make the transition out of 17 Magazine into, into your entrepreneurship? Well, I spent eight to 10 years in New York City working on some big brands like the New York Times and Calvin Klein. Um, I also was doing um, pure sort of internet marketing back in the 90s with a company called iVillage. Then I transitioned into some more business to business as I moved to Boston and Miami. And then my family situation changed. I had been staying home with two young boys and I was divorced. 
and I hadn't worked in about three or four years. So I had kept up my skill set because I was doing a lot of volunteer work and PR. And I said, I had the luxury. My parents said, would you like to try to start your own firm? We will cover your basic expenses for a small period of time and you can try to make it work because I had these boys at home and I didn't want to be traveling in, in sort of a nine to six chief marketing officer role, right? I would have had a big job. Um, and so that's what I did. And I started small with a few clients and I was able to pick them up from school and take them to soccer. And then I joined with my business partner, who was my previous boss. And we started to build this practice of consulting and helping companies grow. And now we have almost 20 employees distributed throughout the United States and some pretty big clients we're working with. It's been a long four or five years, but the one thing I've learned the most is, you know, just keep, keep walking through those doors and keep selling, right? You can be a great marketer. You can be a great trainer. You could be a great speaker or accountant. And if you want to be on your own, if you're not always selling, you don't have a company. Amen to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Right? I mean, entrepreneurship is solving problems and selling. That's how I see it. Yes. Now, as a, a, for women starting up, because that's the, you, you've got some women that have turned a hobby into a business. So they aren't accustomed to asking for money because it was a hobby. It's hard. It is. And how do you flip that mindset? I think what I, I always used to say, you know, people say, oh, you're great at sales. You're really outgoing. And I am. And I was. But you know what I learned? I was not a closer. It was really uncomfortable for me to talk about money, even in a corporate environment. I have failed in sales roles. When I was selling myself or selling my ideas or my concepts, it was a completely different ballgame. I had no problem with it. And the values started small. And I think that's just, just start somewhere and know what that number is. But then as you gain confidence, you can start to value sell a little bit more because you know what you're offering people and you can start to ask for bigger numbers. And we've done that as a company because we have a lot of proven success now. Um, but when selling myself, I mean, if I can't sell me, I don't know what I can sell, right? Yes. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's about. People need to connect with you. Yes. And then they look at what you're offering. Yes. I open the door, right? But then I can't scale a company if it's all me or if it's all my business partner. So how do you create a company, a service-based business? Because that's what we are. Mm -hmm. We're a marketing consulting firm that still carries on the personality and the intellectual property of my business partner and me. And that's sort of, that's sort of the secret with us, right? Um, we live our values, like we all sort of know who we are and we've built a company based on kindness, based on lifelong learning, based on doing the right thing, even when it's hard, you know, and that's sort of that, that sort of intangible that we have. And then creating the intellectual property to make sure everything that we know, sort of the team knows and teaching and training. Um, I have a really phenomenal group of people who work with us. And that's the way it should be. Mm. Well, COVID oh. helped that for us, right, guys? Like, we don't have to hire in our market. Right. Yeah. You know, I can now look for the best people all over the country to offer my clients as opposed to having them based in South Florida. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's very true. A little bit more. You were talking, you were saying about selling self. And yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Because that's well, the thing I think most people have the hardest time doing is selling self, you know, who they are. That's when we sort of shut down and get really shy all of a sudden at the least, most inappropriate time. Right. Well, I think, you know, one of either Ida or you, Ruth, hit on it. It's, it's really the connection, I feel. Um, a week ago, Monday, we were in Miami Beach meeting with a company that wasn't sure about us, right? We sent them a big proposal. It was for a long period of time. We had had one call and they weren't sure that we were the right fit, especially because it's a big number and they're in there. And in that meeting, we really just tried to get to know each other as people. 
and connect and find some commonality because we all come from the same place, don't we? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I feel like more and more, we feel a little bit divided in this world and to really just sort of connect on a human level. And when you see each other, I think then it's easier to say, well, you know, we've had this, we have established this and this is who I am and this is what I offer. Um, and maybe I think the veneer of selling with COVID has been ripped back a little bit now. You know, we're not selling as much as saying, do you have a need? Because this is what I have to offer that I think fulfills that need. Does this make sense to you? Is this something you can afford? Because this is the price. And if not, I'll help you find something else. And we often do that. We turned some, you know, we couldn't take on some work or a client today, or it wasn't a good fit for the firm, given our staffing right now. And I gave them three other people to try and made those introductions. Right. So I think when it's people helping other people and connecting, it's not so much selling self, right. you know, it's just trying to see if, if there's a need that, that I can help fill. Okay. That's a totally different way of coming um, across in business. I mean, this is, there's a new paradigm in business. And a lot of it is really about service. What is your need? How can we fulfill it? And I like what you're saying. If we can't fulfill it, then knowing other people that we can move them on to and say, well, I know somebody who might be able to help you. Absolutely. Or just being authentic. Yes. Right. Yeah. Saying I can't do this. It's beyond my ability about beyond my scope at this yeah. moment. Or I even, or we're going to charge you too much because it takes too many of these resources from the firm. And I don't think that's going to fit your budget, but I have these people who will, I mean, it's, and, and so I even think on our, on websites now, right. It's not so much hype and not so much sort of glossy sales, you know, it's, you know, how can I help fulfill your need in an authentic way? That's why one-to-one marketing with chat on websites, I know there are a lot of pop-ups happening, but at least you're allowing a visitor to your website to get access to the information that they need right away. Right. Right. So it's about that one-to-one experience. And we tell our clients, focus on the foundation. You know, how are people encountering you in any part of their journey with you? And do it well and do it authentically and give them what they need. Don't sell them. Don't push or try to drive them down this place. Just meet them where they are at that part and service what they need authentically, right? Mm-hmm. I love there it. Are so many people right now who I think have become aware of the hype. Mm. Uh, there's so many um, organizations, individuals who have products that they are selling. And as soon as you get wind of it, your tendency is to shut down. But when you find someone who's actually providing a service and it's sort of an open door, it's like it's an invitation in to find out what they have. And if there is going to be a mutual um, a, a foundation for the two of you to talk together, those are the people that are really drawing mm-hmm. um, clients, yes, uh, yeah. the people who are selling whatever. It's gotten to be a turnoff. It really has gotten to be a turn off. It almost feels like they're not listening. Right. Right? Yeah. No, it's sort of this one way thing. They're not actually listening to what you're saying and and it loses its genuineness. Yes. And 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 we're also pressed for time too. You know, I don't know if you all are feeling that, you know. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, very definitely. (laughs) There are not enough hours in the day, not enough days in the week. And Every week that Thursday comes along, it's like, oh my gosh, it's Thursday again. I know. And we think January lasts forever, but now it's almost February and we're wondering where it went, you know? And so I and I just don't think people have time for that. Everything's it's like a self-serve world, you know, and let's just have authentic, genuine conversations in business. If you know, and I'm starting, it's funny, when I started doing some podcast work, I was I was an over preparer. My children tell me that I'm a try hard. (laughs) <laughs> which, is a, <laughs> which is apparently a person who tries really, really hard. And that was me in school too. And so I accept it about myself, but I, I would sort of rush through answers and feel like I had to be perfect. And then I thought, well, wait a second, this is just a conversation. And what is presenting strategy to clients? Conversation. What is um, pitching ideas to clients? It's conversation. What, what about when I want to talk to my children about drinking and driving? Things like that. It's conversation. 
So if we start to look at life as conversation where we are actively listening and trying to connect to the person who is in front of us, you know, then I think everything just takes on something a little bit more authentic. And then we're not wasting people's time because you're not talking at them. Right. Exactly. Uh, you're not talking at them. Uh, that is very, very important. Try to talk at a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Shut down, not listening. Uh, kids will definitely teach you how to communicate. It's, I mean, with my son, it's like, I'll ask him something. Nope. Yup. I'm like, is that all you know is one word? <laughs> yes. But if I say, tell me about, yeah, you know, even their music guys, right? I, I don't listen to the same music that my children do. Um, the language is something I'm not used to, right? In music and um, the contents, but you got to go in there. You know, you go into their worlds and listen and don't and be in that with them. And I think that's the same with our clients and customers, like use empathy to go into their shoes and look at their needs, you know, and you're, if, if a current, if and our customers having an issue, like it's, go, go in their world and try to understand what's happening. I think it's, you know, I swear these teens have been some of my greatest teachers, <laughs> which I never expected. <laughs> Uh, you never know where the education is going to come from <laughs> that's right look at these two guys with his hair all over the place you know being my biggest guides right now so wow. it's many women out there that are moms and wives and all of this running businesses um how do you keep it together let's put it that way mm. how do you keep it together because I know sometimes is I have a son, I have a husband, and sometimes it's it's crazy. Yeah, well, we're expected to play a lot of roles, right? And they're all very different. In some places, we're expected to be really big and bold, and I think that's in our households, right? Uh, we are the CEO of the family in many ways, right? The logistics, the food, the the discipline, and many, you know, and we're also we're also expected to be sort of small in other places, in a boardroom, when we're around people maybe who aren't like us and we walk into that very bold and that doesn't always work. Um, what I think it results in is us being very adaptable. A lot of times I just try to tell myself, go gracefully to the next thing. You know, it just to not, to be organized, right? I think that helps to just lay out the time that we talk about that's so precious. But I, you know, I'm traveling to Nashville this week. I have a son who lives here with me. I have another son playing semi-professional soccer at a, as a 15 year old in another city. I am a single parent and I own a business and I travel for my business. So I'm in Nashville this week with a client and I just have to remind myself, go with grace to the next thing and go slow sometimes because I think that speeding up and trying to balance and doing all of the busy, I think you can do what you can in that moment and then move to the next thing. And there are going to be things and never tell yourself, I'm not a good, I, this was use was my story early when my children were very little. Oh, I'm not a great mom and I'm not a great executive. I'm mediocre at both. And that wasn't true. I don't think that's true at all. To not tell yourself those stories, you yeah. know, you, you just by doing all of the things you are great. Yes. Yes. I, I, think, I think women are remarkable. I, I really, do. I think yeah. we are the next Amazing. leaders of the world. <laughs> I agree. We're getting there, right? We're getting close. Yes. <laughs> men ain't, too, in my opinion, they ain't really doing a great job. <laughs> they got too much people. ego. I, you know, too and much. I think we're good listeners. Yeah. I think we choose peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that we can navigate difficult situations on a regular basis every day. And you know? we do naturally. We do. I think life trains us to be great leaders, you know? Yes. I, I have to agree with you, you know, and mm. we collaborate, yes. you know, we don't have a problem. If you tell me it's a new uh, skincare product, I, I'm going to go right and get it. Cause you, yep. <laughs> you, done, you done, um pumped it up, girl, what? Where'd you get it? <laughs> Well, that's part of the sisterhood, right? Yeah. And even all of those bar barriers are being broken down. I think, um, I think we, a lot of us are learning the experience that a lot of other women and people in the world have had that women like me was not, we're not fully aware of. 
I did not know how easy things were for me in a lot of ways um, and how it hasn't been that. And I think the sisterhood between all of us is stronger in the last few years with oh, allyship. Yes. And, and I hope you feel that, you know? I do. Yes. I really do. Good. Yeah. You know, I have a question for you. So sort of yeah. off the chain, but I totally agree with what we're talking about right now. But I want to know why you came up with the um, name for your company, oh. Wild Coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not what people expect. <laughs> um, wild Coffee is a plant native to South Florida that was growing outside my window when I was writing my business plan. And it is vibrant and it grows really steadily. And a lot of times I'd have to cut it back with a machete and it has these green glossy leaves and the berries are a little bit bitter. So it's beautiful, but sort of beware of that. And I thought when I was writing it, what an amazing sort of metaphor for making companies grow, um, not being everything you see all the time, you know? And uh, so we decided to name it that. So we do get inquiries, you know, do we, do we market for coffee shops? You know, somebody's getting, importing a new line from Colombia. Would we market it for them? <laughs> so we can market coffee. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> a perfect lead in to a client. Yes. Awesome. I was just I will, curious. Yes. No. And, and uh, it has some stopping power, right? Naming in this environment is very difficult. Um, we do name companies and brand them. Um, but so much is taken. Domain names are taken. Trademarks are taken in every category. So you have to be, I mean, talk about using creativity to transform something. I mean, we, um, it's a difficult business, but um, we do a lot of naming and uh, it's a lot of fun, but it's challenging for sure. Oh yeah. Along that it. line, let's talk about that a little bit. There are so many women who are starting their own businesses and some of them start them in their own names, depending on what they're doing. But what goes into choosing a name for your company? Well, it's funny that? you say that, Ruth, because I this company was Amy Anderson Marketing and PR when I started it. So I used it and I've always loved my name and the double A's, you know, sort of worked. Um, I, it's a couple of things. It needs to be easy to pronounce and easy to spell, right? You don't want to have to spell it every time you say it and you don't want people pronouncing it incorrectly. It can't be too long because then people will abbreviate it their own way and you don't always want that. KFC went along with it, right? So they were Kentucky Fried Chicken and KFC ended up being their brand name. But if it's too long, they'll abbreviate it. Um, and then it has to be memorable, right? So if you have a name, right, that sparkles a little bit or is memorable, it's great to use. Otherwise, choosing something like the reason we chose Wild Coffee, it meant something to me, but you also remember it. Right. right. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. And, and I oftentimes think it should have some story or association, right? We recently um, named a fin financial institution, Sonata, and they're based in Tennessee. So it was an ode to music and Sonata and a piece of music there. Mm -hmm. Easy to spell, mm -hmm. easy to pronounce. And it, it sometimes you look for something that sort of feels good in the mouth. Like it's fun to say Sonata. Yeah, so the, so it kind of rolls off your tongue. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, lot of vowels, you know, and things. Um, yes. My business school students just named a company Secora, S-E-E-K-O-R-A. And it is Italian for safety, but they changed the spelling. So a lot of time it was S-I-C-U-R-A and they changed it to S-E-E-K, like seek, look for something. It's a bag tagging sort of technology. Wow. So, and it's to have fun with it and just try to create something that people will remember. Um, and that still sort of describes what you do. Yes, okay. yes. So before we move any further, how can people get in touch with you? Well, we're easy to find at Wild Coffee Marketing. Uh, dot com. And then I'm also under Amy Anderson on LinkedIn. And if you look for me as Wild Coffee, Amy, you can find me there. Okay. All righty. So this Another is like, yeah. this is good. This is, this good. is very good because that's sort of what we're into. We're, you know, a marketing and we believe that when people connect with you, they connect to your products and services. And we use the podcasting and television to help entrepreneurs to get their products and services out and tell a story. Because a lot of times what happens, people know, you know that something had to happen for you to get to where you are. And yeah. they also know it wasn't a straight line. 
So let's no, talk we, about those things. Well, can we, t- can we say pandemic? I mean, that, that one I think <laughs> has impacted all of us in different ways, right? We ended up growing after, but we were, you know, impacted deeply by that. Um, we also didn't pray. We didn't put boundaries on our services as well as we could have in the beginning. So we gave away a lot because it's who we are as people. And then it was really sort of not working for financial models and trying to figure out how how much to give and financially how to charge and model that and then who to hire, right? And how to scale. So I think for a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs, you have a great idea. It gets a little bit of traction. And then how how do you get it to grow? And everyone's looking for the holy grail which is how do you acquire customers at the lowest cost and what channel is that? And then how do I turn it up and scale? And some of that is luck, but I think you have to have an appetite for trying a lot of different things and failing a little bit. I agree with that. (laughs) And you got to fail forward, right? So you can't fail Fail and freak out. (laughs) You can't fail and freak out. You got to fail forward and keep going. Um, and you also, I think in marketing, you have to try things a little bit more than once, right? You, you've got to have a little bit of, a little bit of grit in there. You know, if it's, if it's digital campaigns, if it's influencers, if it's, it's, if it's paid SEO, um, paid PPC, things like that, like got to, you got to have a stomach for it a little bit. Um, and just yeah. to keep going and to really try to find that customer and, and know what their need is and to say the right thing to them. Mm-hmm. So your company, give us a little bit of all the service that you provide. Well, what's interesting with Wild Coffee is um, we believe that every company needs a chief marketing officer, a CMO, but not necessarily full-time because either you can't afford it or you don't need it, right? CMOs are usually 30, 20, 30 year marketing veterans. We've sort of seen a lot. So we founded the company so that we could deliver strategy to a lot of other businesses. And unless you've done that strategy foundational work, you should not do one thing without it, right? Because it's almost like getting off two degrees and you're on a sailboat and you start in the United States. Instead of in Africa, you're in Europe because you kept going on the wrong course that was only two degrees off, but over time you're going to be way off, right? right? So we really, really dig into strategy. And what is that? That's who are we talking to? What are we going to say to them? And where do we find them? I mean, it's sort of basic if you think about it in that way, right? But I, we find that a lot of companies just dive in and start doing, doing, doing without answering those fundamental questions. So that's sort of a simplified version of it. And so we really start with the foundational work and the outsource CMO, and then we build fractional marketing teams, right? So in today's environment, there, you guys know there's so many different disciplines. It doesn't make sense to have all of those people in-house. Right. So we have those disciplines at Wild Coffee. And what we'll do is form a fractional marketing team. So you get all the things that you need, but it's seven people part-time that people pay us on retainer for. So that's the model. We're not a typical digital agency where we dive in and start doing campaigns or doing that creative work. We build the strategy and then we all sign off on that. And we say, okay, here are your four people that work with you on a regular basis. And it may be social media, it may be digital, we have in-house creative people, and then we have consultants with a lot of client-side marketing experience. Um, so we work with some interesting brands, right? We are in marine, financial services, franchise and multi-location, wellness, uh, SaaS software companies. So we're really industry agnostic. Um, and that's sort of a, a tribute to the talent of our team that they can ramp up really quickly and understand an industry and a company and begin, you know, really doing some impactful things right away. I really love that model. That's, that's like leverage all the way. Right. Cause you know, otherwise, what are you going to do? Have a full-time SEO person and a paid digital person. You don't need them full-time, but you need it. And then if you hire a digital firm, you maybe get parts of it. We really provide soup to nuts, you know, through a 20 person team, you can have little parts of their time and they work really quickly and they're really smart, but. Awesome. Again, awesome. another change in business, the paradigm is changing. You don't have to have everything in house, like the big advertising agencies of 30, 40 years ago, no. where everything was in house. 
Right. Now, and we don't like believe that. that model works. It's really expensive. It's, it's very, very expensive. expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. And, and not it, always beneficial, as they often found out. Right. Thousands of dollars into a campaign and it was not working. And you still had to pay people. Right, Absolutely. right. Or, or an in-house graphic designer. This is another thing that we believe. In many situations, it may work, right? And you may have listeners who work in-house who are graphic designers and they're doing beautifully. There are cases where maybe it's not a good fit or somebody's been there for a long time and maybe they're not fulfilled in their job. And then everything that is produced by this designer for this company is not really, the brand is shackled, right? Like they, it's not progressing. They're not multiple. I think with design, you need multiple fresh eyes looking at it all the time. Yes, I agree. I agree. The more perspectives, the better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fresh ideas, fresh ways of looking. You know, we work with a company called Stretch Zone. They are, um, they have 150 locations throughout the U.S. They are a stretching wellness boutique fitness concept, wellness concept where you go in and actually are stretched by a practitioner um, who is highly trained by them. And we have multiple designers working on that account at all times because you know, we have very strict brand standards, but somebody will see something new and bring something fresh and they're doing video. They're doing social. We just bought an ad in the Super Bowl uh, program. Somebody's doing print. So yes, very exciting. Drew Brees yeah. just bought multiple locations. Um, and so he's a spokesperson and we love working with him. And we just did an ad for the Super Bowl program. So, Congratulations. But you wow. couldn't do that in-house. You have one designer. That designer is expected to know video, yeah. to design for social, to do print, to do web that, that, and then, so then you're hiring multiple freelance. It just doesn't work it, with us. We really try to keep, it's all of those skill sets in, in one company. And we work very closely with our clients. So. I love that. I really yeah. do. Now, while we're talking about marketing and, and advertising, let's make sure our viewers understand the difference because there is a difference. Yes. Well, there are different disciplines entirely, right? Um, marketing is really uh, the, how you're approaching, who you see as your target persona, right? How you are reaching out to them. And the advertising is actually the promotional materials that brings them in. Right. Yeah. Right. So marketing is the thing. Um, and advertising is one of the disciplines of it. So, you know, and it was in those days, marketing did have a role and our primary role was advertising right now because everything is digital first in this environment, yes. marketing teams own the entire customer experience. So when people come to your website, who builds that? The marketing team does, right? When they are seeing you on social media, that comes out of marketing. Before it was a lot of sales or in-store and now digital first, the marketing team owns a lot of that. So we sit in the C-suite often, right? We, and we should have a voice among that group of executives, for sure. And we own all the data. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's very, okay. very interesting. Now, yeah. managing a remote team, mm. how does that work? Well, I think it has to be intentional, right? We are lucky enough that we started this company with a distributed model when we launched it. A lot of people had to all of a sudden adapt to that in COVID. I think you have to really focus on communicating. I think you have to decide what your culture is, you know, and make sure that that everything you do sort of sits with that. We, I found out that I'm a really good game show host online. <laughs> so we do happy hours. Okay. I host a mean bingo game. We play Ellen DeGeneres' Psych. We have played Jeopardy. Oh. I have used gongs. <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> so I think you, you have to, again, it comes back to connection, right? Like how do you connect to motivate a team that, especially during COVID and they're in their house with their children and all of that is happening. How do you establish relationships and connect with them? And it's by getting together and spending time. It's making sure they're okay. Yes. You know, we, you know, you can have a chat app, but you can go in on a Monday morning and say to have your team, Hey, how was your weekend? Like how, how is the family? Yeah. Like, how are you? And I think that that it has, it's a lot of intentional communication because you're not just walking past them in a hallway anymore. Yes. And it's not like, you know, yes, we have a job to do, 
but we care about you as a person. But that's a so lot. critical. Well, it's, I think, and I wonder if a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners feel this way, but I'm honored that people have chosen to work with us as part of their career journey. Like I am honored that you made this choice to come be with us and take a chance on this, you know, small company that's growing. But for me, you know, I, I treat that with, with a lot of reverence, you know, oh, that we on the know? same page. Just people saying yes to be on our podcast. I oh. honor that. Mm. I truly honor that because that says something about who we are, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just priceless. Well, and you've created something out of your mind, right? This came from your minds. This was an idea. You created it. And now people want to be a part of that. And I do think that that's meaningful. Yeah. You know, I sat in a chair one day and said, I cannot leave these little boys every day. What am I going to do? I have to support myself. I'm in this situation. I have to go back to work. You know, can I, can I do this? And now it is a, a thing that we have created and people are deciding to bet on us for their career growth. Yeah. So I take that very seriously. seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they, am I teaching them? Absolutely. Yeah. Like what skills are they learning? How are they growing? You know, I want to train, I watch them so that they can be hired by anyone, but that they don't want to. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. exactly. And that's the way it should be. I think that's so. And I think that people, it's two different types of leaders. I always say the one you have to follow and then the ones you want to follow. Mm. And that's how you want your company to be built on something that people want to follow also being able to allow people to be creative bring their ideas because at the end of the day we don't know everything no no yeah. i know nothing some days and i, I told <laughs> one yeah i was like I, I have no idea what i'm doing okay. yeah i woke up this morning i'm like monday okay like where am i going oh just across the house to your office you know <laughs> you got this girl <laughs> you, you can make it the 30 feet across i know you can do it you know but i i told one of my team members today like i've tried to hire people people who i think are smarter than me yeah. you know i don't have all the answers bring you and bring you in your full humanity you yeah. know she's moving on the same day that we have this big client kickoff and she was going to try to do it and i said that honey that's what the recording i didn't call her honey i'm saying that now but like that's what the record button's for you go move your family, no meeting on that, you know? Um, so they bring so much. And when you're open to your people, don't assume you know everything, yeah. you know, honor them that they decided to go with you. Yeah. And in our careers, that's going to be on their resume. That experience is going to stick with them. So I want it to be good, you know? Absolutely. Wow. And very important. Very important. Again, a new paradigm. And in a sense, it's not. It used to be the old paradigm where companies cared about their employees. They weren't just a line. They weren't no. just somebody who showed up and punched a clock and did the work and went home. No. So now what we're talking about is our companies are forming on the basis of creating teams that they care about their employees and their employees care about the leaders because it's like we're all in it together. You know, we're yeah. all in it together. And when you see the leader roll up their sleeves, and do the dirty work right along with you, it makes a difference. It makes you a know, huge it makes a difference. difference. It oh, makes yeah. And that's, a, that's why corporate is having such a hard time because people exactly. don't want that corporate mentality anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not about I'm in the upper office in the corner looking at a gorgeous view and you're down there doing the, the grunge work. And, you know, if you manage to get up this high, that's good. But, you know, basically you're down there. And no. And I wonder if it's good for those of us. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if it's good for some of us who have been sort of left out that now, you know, I wonder if COVID has sort of leveled the playing field a little bit. We're all at home. There are no corner offices to try to get into. Um, it, it, we're all flat on a screen. And I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if it's more merit-based now that performance matters mm -hmm. or how you survive. 
I think as women and mothers, a lot of us have picked up an extra set of survival skills. I'm like, all right, thank you. I'll take these two <laughs> you know, right. on my journey because I learned how to get through this with two kids, you know, in homeschool while I was doing this. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I wonder if it's, if it, I don't know if it's sort of made it a little bit, a little bit more even. We're all just a little uh, square on a screen. Let, absolutely. Let's, let's see who rises to the top this way. <laughs> yeah, really. Yes, and we've all, yeah, and we've all had to pivot. We've all had to change the way we do things, you know, and it's making us, like you said, we're all the same. We all on a flat screen mm -hmm. doing business. Exactly. That's right. And, and we're all surviving. Wonderful. Yeah, and we're all surviving and we're all getting the opportunity to meet people that normally we would if we not in the pandemic, we would not have met. Right. No. So we're getting this wide range of information and uh, like a confluence of energy, mm -hmm. especially amongst women. I don't know what men are doing. I don't under I don't see that. But we do speak with a lot of women. Oh, a whole lot of this, this, <laughs> this confluence of energy is very powerful. It is. It's very powerful. And like you said, it's like we're getting a chance to see what skills we can gain. And sometimes we don't even realize the skills that we've gained until we have to suddenly pull them out of our little skill bag. Exactly. It's like, it's like oh, wait a minute. I, uh, can I do that? Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yeah. I forgot that during this pandemic, I did thus and thus and thus and so. And so I've developed that muscle, I've developed that skill. So it's just really a very interesting time. Like you said, maybe it's going to level the field a lot. People are learning different languages. I'm amazed mm -hmm. at the number of people who have picked up a different language in this time period of time. Yes. Just trying to, you know, deal with their neighbors because Lord knows we've had an Asian influx and you yeah. kind of like need to know it at least how to say hello and thank you. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's really an interesting time. It's very invigorating. And, yes, you know, your is. coffee, your company, Wild Coffee Marketing, uh, has such a divergence of things that you do. And obviously, you're doing them well. And we really thank you for coming. And I have a horrible curiosity question, please. Oh, my gosh, it. please don't tell me. <laughs> Let it you roll, Ruth. What do you got? Calvin Klein. Yes. For more than 25 years, I'm trying to figure out how long I've been in Maryland. But you know, the Times Square yes. ads for Calvin Klein. Which ones are you talking about, Marky Mark, Ruth? Yes. All <laughs> the, did you have anything to do with any of those? Because when oh, soon as I, I saw it. that, I said, that's the first thing that flashed into my mind. I love album that you remember up. that. Yes. So I did not do those. I worked on the Kate Moss oh. ones when she was on the bus. Remember when she did the obsession campaign? Yes. Ah. We, we actually sent her to um, an island with her boyfriend, who is a photographer, and just sent a bunch of bottles and fragrance and let them just play. And that's what that campaign came out of. Wow. But my grandmother, who was in Illinois at the time, used to tell, she called me and she said, I don't know about you putting this naked lady on buses. <laughs> and that's what we did because she was wrapped on every bus in New York City. Uh -huh. I oh, said, wow. Nana, I'm sorry, but it sells a lot of perfume. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, but I did get to, um, Ruth, see a lot of the models coming in for castings. So that was nice. And at 17 Magazine, there are lots of fun people that came in there. And I, I loved that world in New York. Um, it is not a lucrative world to work in as a young woman, right, in the 90s, but I sure did get my chops um, cut. And I, I, I thought about this time recently that I didn't have a lot of life experience. You know, I got married when I was 31, but I spent 22 to 30 working. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing in New York. And so I think there are parts of me that did not mature or grow or know what I was doing in other parts of my life mm -hmm. because I spent my twenties working so much. And it's not necessarily like a normal existence in New York city for all those years. I had a lot of fun. Uh, don't get me wrong. And I had great <laughs> jobs, but it was interesting. You know, when I look back at that time, yeah. You know, now at 50, 
Yeah. At 51, my skill bag is pretty full. So I awesome. somehow it a lot of things accelerated, but yes, oh, and plus we there's so more wisdom. Yes, don't don't you? I love this time where I I feel unflappable. Yes, in many ways, there's not a lot that you could throw at me. You know, I haven't experienced real grief, but you know, there's not a whole lot that you could throw at me that I wouldn't be like, okay, well, here's something. Right, mm-hmm. exactly, exactly. We've been through yeah. enough that mm-hmm. we can go, we, we ready for whatever you bring, bring it. Yes. <laughs> and you know what I find in my fifties too? Friendships. Yeah. Friendships that I've had for a long time that maybe were a little bit competitive when everybody's having children, everybody is getting married around the same time. It creates this very sort of competitive environment, I think with among women too. And I have a lot of those same friends now and our friendships are really wonderful. And I really don't know what I would do without them. Yes. I thought she got history. You know, like my girlfriend, we've been friends since sixth grade. (gasps) And I will never get another friend for that amount of time. No, yeah, that's true. We've been friends for over 50 years. So I will never, ever get another friend with that length of time. No, there's, there's, um, we call it friend momentum too, where somebody knows you that long. There's just so much momentum in that. And, and, and I've told my boys in high school, these friends that you have now, like there's something so special about communicate or to connecting with people during this time of your life. Yes. Especially, you know, when you're six, but as women, I think to be a really good friend takes courage. Yes. It, does. it takes selflessness. It takes good communication and it can be some of the richest experiences you have with other people, you know, to really, and I really value those, those friendships. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. So again, Amy, how can people get in touch with you? They can find me at wildcoffeemarketing.com or if you look on LinkedIn for Amy Wild Coffee, you are sure to find me. Okay. Well, this has been an awesome conversation to say the Thank least. Thank you. I think we've Thank talked you. about everything under the sun. I know. I even <laughs> touched on friendship for the first time. I've never gone there on a podcast, ladies. <laughs> so we are definitely sitting around the coffee table. Chat. This is a really nice vibe. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for all that you do and all of the jewels and tips that you just gave all our listening audience is invaluable. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for creating this platform to talk and to be with you. And and it feels like I'm talking to some, some old friends and wise business women, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Likewise. Your business through just mighty my business media has exposure on internet radio, major social media platforms, and now TV. Through Just Minding My Business, dynamic digital marketing platform. Don't listen to the word on the street. Hear it for yourself. Visit jmmb.assistedcircle.org to learn how you can take your business, your vision, to the next level. Voiceovers by RCH Voiceworks for when you want to be heard. Call 443-620-4115. for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.